Governor Lee defends the state health department's decision to stop vaccine outreach for all children. He also sticks by Commissioner Piercy's choice to fire Dr. Michelle Fiscus. It's been 10 days since health leaders fired Dr. Michelle Fiscus. I've reached out to the state health department every day, giving them an opportunity to respond, but they've declined. Governor Bill Lee says he supports Health Commissioner Lisa Piercy's decision on personnel matters and halting vaccine outreach to children. A memo obtained by Fox 17 News shows health leaders cite Dr. Fiscus's failure to maintain good working relationships and her lack of effective leadership. But Dr. Fiscus believes they fired her because of a memo she sent out regarding a law that states my can get vaccinated without parental consent. Emails sent to us by Dr. Fiscus showed the governor's office approved this memo. This is the governor's response. I can't speak to what Dr. Fiscus says or didn't say. I just trust that, and I'll, I'll say this one more time, our department and the leadership made the decisions that they think are in the best interest, and I fully support those decisions. Up tonight at nine, hear why some are calling on Dr. Fiscus to be reinstated. Chairman John Reagan says he stands by the letter read at the meeting today and feels they were just making sure COVID-19 procedures matched federal law. I am going to read a statement. Chairman Kerry Roberts of the Committee for Government Operations opened today's meeting with a letter concerning the state's health department. One of Chairman Roberts and Reagan's biggest concerns, giving the COVID-19 vaccine to minors without parental consent. For the first time, we're hearing from GOP Chairman John Reagan, who represents part of Anderson County on the controversy. It is a personal decision if they choose to be vaccinated, that's fine, provided they're of legal age and or have parental consent. Many GOP lawmakers believe it should be up to parents when it comes to medical decisions. Are you okay with children getting the vaccine? With parental consent only. But under the mature minor doctrine, it does state Tennessee law that 14, 16, 17 year olds can get the vaccine without parental consent. You are speaking of a judicial doctrine that is not statute. And there are places in Title 49 that are specifically contradictory to that. Title 49 is the education code, which governs school-aged children. But, so, it's, but it's case law. I, I do have another appointment. I deal in statutes. I'm a legislator. Okay, I don't mess with the courts. And they don't mess with me. The other concern from both chairmen, marketing to minors instead of to parents, which led State Health Commissioner Lisa Piercy to halt vaccine outreach for children. Are you concerned with the state's decision to stop vaccine outreach? They have not stopped vaccine outreach. They've only limited it to the populations for which it's intended. That is to say the parents of the children, not the children. Representative Vincent Dixie asked to speak and requested public comment, but Chairman Roberts denied that request and quickly moved on. Murray County is number one for growth, but has zero dollars to expand its school system right now. That can only change if county commissioners and school board members can put aside their differences and come together for the children of their district. As Murray County grows, so does its need for classrooms. School leaders say some schools are in need of major repairs, and others, like Spring Hill High School, are at capacity. It's exhausting to always hear we don't have the funding. Teacher Stephanie Sparks Newland says the county needs to make some serious investments to best serve its students. Our number one concern is the kids. Like That's what the whole school system about, is the children of our community. The Murray County School Board drew up a $76 million plan to address growth needs. It includes building a new high school in the northern part of the county and converting the current Spring Hill High School into an elementary school. But county commissioners rejected that plan. Discouraging, says School Board Chair Michael Fulbright. Obviously, we're disappointed that we didn't get the funding that we requested, but we did get a lot of good feedback. I reached out to commissioners to find out why they voted against it. One concern, a rise in property taxes. Taxes would increase by about $70 a year for a home valued at $200,000. I had received several calls this time about not raising taxes. Not to say I wouldn't do it if the plan was right. I just don't feel like the plan fits the need at this time. But the biggest concern, the plans for Spring Hill High. I think it's uh, not feasible to move the high school. I think the high school will stay where it's at. But commissioners say they'd support a modified plan, and Fulbright says the school board is working on that. Talking to county commissioners, they seem open to a compromise. Is that something the board is willing to do as well? Most definitely. We realize that we can't do anything without their funding approval. So we have to be able to work together. 
Fulbright says they hope to work alongside commissioners to come up with a new plan with more widespread support. There's no deadline for getting this funding passed, but there is a sense of urgency. County leaders want to act quickly while interest rates are low so they don't end up spending more in the long run.